ganz besonders begrüßen möchte ich und damit gleichzeitig auch Dank sagen an Benjamin Geisler, Filmemacher aus Hamburg. Und er ist auch derjenige, der mit seinem Filmteam in Drohobitsch die verloren geglaubten Fresken von Bruno Schulz wiedergefunden hat und nun, zehn Jahre später, diese Installation, die eine Rekonstruktion der Bilderkammer darstellt, die Sie in der Bildhauerhalle sehen können, entwickelt hat. Tu przyjechał pan Geisler z Hamburga. Win robić film pro Bruno Schulze. I one znają dokładnie, że pod czas faszystskiej okupacji tu mieszkał Gestapowicz, Gestapowicz Landau. Landau. Landau, tak. Ja, to sprach ein eine Unmenge von Menschen, die Yes. Uh, many, many people uh, have to say uh, yes to make it work. Saying yes, that started more than a decade ago. Not only you came to respond to the film, but also when everybody contributed to the film. I in him worked the Drogovitsk writer and художник Бруно Шульц, еврей. И он где-то тут рисовал на стенках какие-то фрески. Детские такие для детей того Ландала. Вы знаете, что то уже приходили до нас и то питали, а не же обдирались из стены, ничего не было. Да ничего. Тут не может быть. Ну, как-то может у кладов и что-то такое делать. Так той протаз сказал, что он тут бачил. Не знаю я. А вы тут не, не, не шукали вони ну, тут? Ну, что? Вот эти поляки. Да они как приходили, то дивились, то... Я не увидел протаз у вас слыхал. Но вы кому-то, вы кому-то. Это здесь, не? Да, это обязательно. Это, 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 это. Прошу, пані, є, знайшли, прошу зайти на секундочку. Потихоньку, потихоньку, прошу не спішити. Не ту, не ту, не ту, не ту. Прошу, ближче зі мною. Де, де, де? Прошу, 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 подивіться. Ви бачите? А я нічого не бачу. А ви не бачите? У мене зірочок нема, нема. Зізікний. Я погано бачу. Є, цілком докладно. Ціла фігура одна і друга, і того клоуна, і того пажа, абсолютно точно є. Ну і слава Богу, що ви там знайшли. Год цей дан за акції, та всі дасть кіпунка. Господь, хай вам допомагає. Зол і нен год гельпен. То що, води давати ще, так? Brauchen Sie Wasser dazu, oder? Wir werden jetzt ganz mit der Ruhe, jetzt wissen wir, dass das da ist. Und jetzt werden wir, ein, jetzt werden wir sehen, wie wir das machen, dass wir sie, dass wir sie freilegen. Otto. Tak, Otto. Tak. Oi, Bosch, Bosch. Wunderbar, das ist... Das ist ein Wunder. Wie viele Leute haben das gesucht? Wie ist passiert, seitdem wir uns das letzte Mal gesehen haben? Also, ich kann Ihnen das nicht erzählen, was es tut. Ich habe schon Angst, zum, zum Telefon anzukommen. Das, das ist schrecklich. From NPR News, it's all things considered. I'm Noah Adams. And I'm Linda Wertheimer. Earlier this year, on the wall of an apartment in western Ukraine, a German filmmaker made an extraordinary discovery. Covered over with layers of paint and forgotten, he found paintings by Jewish artist and Holocaust victim Bruno Schulz. This past spring, a team from the Holocaust Memorial Yad Vashem in Israel removed the paintings and transported them secretly to Israel. 
as nbr's mike shuster reports, the removal has sparked a fierce controversy among israel, ukraine and poland. um rehobitch is a sleepy town in western ukraine, only thirty miles from the polish border. it is not a place often visited by outsiders. in may, it was discovered the paintings were gone. officials from yad vashem refused to speak about what they did. they have released a statement on their website. Yad Vashem restoration specialists found the sketches peeling off the walls and in the most neglected condition. The sketches found were only fragments and not one complete sketch. As Bruno Schultz was a Jewish artist and killed by an SS officer purely because he was a Jew, the correct and most suitable place to house the drawings he sketched during the Holocaust is Yad Vashem, the Holocaust martyr and healer's remembrance authority in Jerusalem. So, jetzt haben wir gleich diese Live-Schaltung nach... Äh, we'll have this live connection to the bus in a minute. It's very pleasure for me that you could have a school will take part. At the time, he was my assistant and now is a literature scientist at Tilburg University. Julian Bukovic also. Who mm -hmm. on the occasion of the 5th Polish Jewish Festival, on the occasion of the 125th birthday of the Jewish and Sinti birthday, now finally we translated the entire works of Polish Jewish into Ukraine. The entire event will take place in Germany. My um, assistant, Roman Josevich, will be sitting in a simultaneous interpreting booth, and all the listeners in the world can listen to our discussion in Ukrainian. Can you still hear me? Okay. Now Yuri Andrukovich has also arrived and he'll join me. And then kann es losgehen, ohne allerdings zu wissen, wo wir ankommen. Das äh, bleibt immer offen, nach wie vor. <lacht> Aber das gilt nicht nur für uns hier, gell? Das stimmt. Äh, und äh, überhaupt... Äh, Actually, the sanctuary äh, event so etwas, äh, so was von I mean, it seems so incomplete what's happened, not finished. I mean, it can never be finished what Bruno Schultz started here. We're talking about a classic here. I'm talking about a very, very big author and painter. And Bruno Schultz, that can never be really complete. However, in this case, our films, your films, this picture room shows why this picture room cannot be here, because this is the big Bruno Schulz here, a double Bruno Schulz here, actually. And to be honest, we'd have hoped, and that was also our plan, to have this also here now that we also have the wonderful book fair here in the book, which is extremely representative, which has a very vast Bruno Schulz program also, and in the context of this program, you have dozens of different events. Why this picture room is not here today, this is something I'd also like to discuss with you today. Not everybody knows what the picture room is and how it came about and also why it was necessary to build this picture room. This is why I would like to ask you to start telling us everything that happened beforehand before we start with the discussion. So what happened in 2000, Christian Geisler had this idea 
this idea that it might be possible to find morals that one had thought were lost in, in the former apartment of Landau. And with, by searching for the pictures and finding the pictures, one could uh, maybe make that into a film. That was the underlying idea. What happened was the film and also the discovery. That was in 2001, in the winter of 2001. And what followed was that the pictures, the moles, rather fragments, were brought to Vatyashen. And that triggered a tremendous worldwide debate, which was similar to a worldwide scandal, because the remaining moral fragments were removed by a restoration commission in Ukraine, and after that, nothing much happened. Some years later then, you started your second attempt of making a film, which was titled Lost Pictures, Lost Memory. And then there were many attempts that you made to continue this story. And the continuation is the picture room that we have today, but you can put that in better words than I can. Let me start with two sentences, how Christian Geisler and Benjamin Geisler together went on this quest for Bruno Schulz's morals. You can see part of it in the film, but to give you just the basics, Christian Geisler is an author and he wrote his first novel at the beginning of the 1960s. It's called Anfrage or The Sins of the Fathers in English. It's about the sins of the fathers during the NS time. Uh, it's based on a story in Munich with a scientific assistant who goes on the search of for the um, of a scientific assistance. And at the ending of his work, Christian talked to me about his idea because he was reading on his birthday because others were in Horowitz at the time and um, they thought there were other murals also in Horowitz which one couldn't find. And before that film, I also shot another film which is called Zeitsprung. Time War in English. And this film is in Upper Silesia where people are searching about the question what is German and he saw that film. Poland shifted towards the West after World War II and then we talked to people who came from Galicia originally. I said yes immediately and he uh, he really gave me his plans, and I was enthusiastic. So this is the underlying idea. This was the idea that he triggered in me in 1999, but it took three years until I had the money for the implementation, until we could leave. And very fortunately, Yuko and Roman Vasevich, who is doing the interpreting in Ukraine now, I had two excellent, really brilliant, unique assistants and colleagues together with whom we try to figure out how we could really do it. The searching for the pictures and also finding the pictures, and you can see that in the scenes, up to when these moles were destroyed. It's a reality. Three of the fragments are shown in the Holocaust Museum in Israel, Bat Yashem, and five further fragments, and uh, I don't really know, but I can ask you about that, Yuri, because you just uh, went to Grabovich. Were they shown? Were these five fragments from Ukraine shown? No, unfortunately, I did not see them. But that's not the answer. Actually, I did not have enough time to go to an exhibition. So I am not really in a position to tell you. 
I mean, there are five fragments who, that are still in Ukraine. Actually, throughout all the stages of this picture room, from the discovery until they were uncovered, it, I filmed everything. I had all the fragments available, which were then shown individually, but of course they were no longer in their original context. The Jewish Museum in Stockholm asked me to make a loop on the Bruno Schulz exhibition and Franz Kafka representing the border country. And for that exhibition, I had tried to reconstruct one of the walls. And when I realized that this is possible, I decided to reconstruct all of the walls. The basis for the reconstruction that you now see here in Freiburg was the scientific reconstruction of the morals in all stages and that true to scale. Based on the scientific work, a second project emerged that was the insulation, this mobile insulation, which was originally intended, and that brings back to what we said at the beginning, that is intended to be shown in Ukraine, but also in Poland, and people also expressed interest in New York, the Institute for Jewish Research in Washington, the Bruno Schulz Foundation. So after the exhibition Freiburg, it will move on to Luxembourg. Next year, you will be able to see it in, both in Brussels and Anvers, in the middle between the two centers in the Holocaust yeah, Center in uh, Mechelen. Well, I'm not really an experienced facilitator of such a talk. We've only started talking to one another through Skype. This is the first time, so I don't really have a lot of experience in Skyping. I'm very happy to hear your well-known voice. The room here is full. I can see you, but I don't see the Freiburg crowd. Well, we don't see the spectators or the participants either in Lubov. There are many of them, so the room is really full to the brim. Everybody is looking at us expectantly. But maybe the enthusiasm will lower very soon, because I think we'll continue not to paint everything in rosy shades. I mean, of course, we love Freiburg, no doubt about that. And I hope the Freiburg audience will understand. So I'm extremely happy for Freiburg that you have this exhibition, the virtual reconstruction, which will be unveiled today and uh, the exhibition will open today. Especially since Freiburg is our twin city. The question, however, remains why was it not possible to get the exhibition here? Because on the one hand, we have several gigantic festivals that we celebrate here. On the one hand, we are honoring Bruno Schulz in various ways. In Drohovich, we only just had a wonderful festival with high-ranking and well-known authors such as the Moscow author Yugo Tukhti and Adam Wichnik, David Kosman. So there are many new books about Bruno Schulz available. There are many new, be it complete or incomplete, Bruno Schulz translations now. The latest by Julian Trochowicz so in the gallery in Lemberg, we have a wonderful exhibition with installations, with graphics, with watches. However, on the other hand, we don't have the picture room here with us. Yuko Androchowicz. 
Let me ask you, what do you think is that the expression of hypocrisy that we, on the one hand, held Bruno Schulz in high esteem, and on, on the other hand, we almost make him a cult? I don't think I exaggerate by saying he's become a cult figure. When it's really important, but a little bit sensitive or a hot topic, then we don't seem to be capable of doing things. Or what do you say? To be honest, this is a very uncomfortable situation. But we usually say, I do understand you I, from the human point of view or the inhuman kind point of view. I think this exhibition is truly missing here in the ball. It, it is also missing in Trovich. But on the other hand, you don't know. One never knows. Maybe this is at the same time a fortunate situation. Maybe we'll have the exhibition here later and then separate it from the many other events that are ongoing. As you said, I mean, there's so much that's connected to Bruno Schulz currently. And maybe the exhibition without all the other events, maybe one, if, if we had the exhibition here at the same time, one wouldn't even see it because there's so much going on. While it's always quite difficult with the different Ukrainian authorities, the various different levels, and it's quite difficult to somehow get involved in all these little power plays amongst uh, the local mayors and others. But maybe we can do that without the mayor to attract the exhibition here and to show it here as an individual, as a separate event. Of course, after the festival, but that doesn't really make a difference. Maybe it's even better for us, because then we'll get all the attention. Yes, of course. And thank you for voicing your opinion. But Benjamin, may I ask you now, thinking about the entire story that led up to this exhibition, I sometimes have the feeling that that wasn't just pure good destiny. You were invited, you reconstructed one of the more walls, and then you had the idea to reconstruct the entire room. I mean, I know that story really well, Sometimes you have the feeling that this was accompanied by lots of emotions, despair, and also maybe passion. That after you had seen the real picture room, uh, which does not contain the morals any longer, which cannot be put together again, that you did what you could do to remedy the situation. Well, that's quite an exciting question. Why do you do that? The only thing I can say is that from the very first day, and I don't know whether you remember, that was when we arrived in Drohovic, and when I started shooting, I remember that Christian Geisler sat on Ludmilla's bed because we uh, at, the same, at the time stayed with Ludmilla, and he said, what am I doing here? I want to go back home. All the pain all the pain that we never had to feel ourselves. But what this is all about is the pain. The pain and this extinction that, that happened 
during the German occupation and that 11,000 Jews were killed in Drohovic alone. All these links, I mean, Bruno Schulz is not a world famous author, he's also a key personality to understand the 20th century. Oh, now we can see the Bob and the Bob audience. Well, the pain in order to, to really um, so that, that a wound can heal and um, people asked about Bruno Schulz and who's Bruno Schulz anyway and w what is he, is he Polish or is he Jewish or is he Austrian I mean that's the wrong approach I rather feel that we've reached a time where all these different cultures and nations are mixing, similar to what used to be in Drohovic in the past. Somebody from Drohovic told me about Matthias Frickl. Before the Moors were detected, we didn't even know who Bruno Schulz is. Now I am happy, even if I'm not there now, that there is a Bruno Schulz festival, that this is one of the focal points at the book fair, that people are talking about it, that the Ukrainian parliament pronounced this year the Bruno Schulz year. I think these are all steps into the right direction, but the more, more painful part of history is missing, at least to a certain extent. However, let me tell you, that's absolutely the same in Germany. There are certain drawers which are just black. Some are nice and structured, and you open them, and others you don't want to open. Even during the first steps of the work, when we had the exposé, there was this whispering about the manitacle in the SS walls. So the murals, the entire composition, which are primarily fairy tale pictures, and also in a way which is very typical for Bruno Schilds on different meta levels, so that you have personified demonstrations of Shua. This is hard work. But you can feel the loss to feel the loss, to grieve and mourn the loss. This is one of the main tasks. When preparing this talk, I called it, this is a talk to find a common ground, a common ground for communication and understanding. I realized that we in Germany, let's be open about it, that we tried not to think about the story for many, many years, just thinking about Landau, who was sentenced two times uh, life. And Bruno Schulz's personal, his personal life story. If you take the micro level and macro level, you can always deduce from that what society was at the time, and people don't really want to cope sometimes, and that happens in Germany and in Ukraine. When looking for exhibition centers to accept my exhibition, it was quite difficult in Germany, and it's the same in Ukraine. I'm now very, very happy that Mr. Intrade and Mr. Wechselberg decided to provide the money for this exhibition. But actually, it's a shame if one of the objectives of our country is to remember Joa that one doesn't have money for such installations. I cannot shed the feeling, Benjamin, and also you, rest of the audience, both in Lebov and also in Freiburg. This is not only about the pain, and not only about the pain, finding the pain and 
trying to cope with the pain, fearing that it could hurt once again. Especially when looking at the big differences on the one hand, uh, this tendency to celebrate Bruno Schulz, and that in, in Ukraine, where there are these big events and happenings that texts are written in the memory of Bruno Schulz to commemorate him. And then, on the other hand, that's just possible because we have this tangible story such as the picture room and the destruction of the picture room with which he doesn't really have to do anything. But when trying to come to terms with that, everything is highly complicated. It's not only pain, but for me, I can hardly understand in a multidimensional level what you find in these pictures. This was, was a Nazi officer commissioned. It's about slave work. It's about enforced domestication of this genius to do this enforced work and not to allow to let his artistic skills run freely as he would have done. Then his killing and then the people did not think about the morals, they overpainted them, they were forgotten, then the countries became separated. For many decades, Polish scientists did not have the opportunity to get to Drohowicz. And now, the more current events, you German authors and film producers, you only somehow ended up going on that quest many decades later. And then the story about the failure of a community in Ukraine. This is about bribery and corruption. This is the story how an artistic and expert commission failed. This is a story about greed and also greed of the media. This is a story about stolen art, about reproduction, about repetition of very traumatic events that one might have lived oneself, which was now repeated once again in the name of Israeli authorities. So how do you deal with it? Let me interrupt very briefly this fragmentation of Bruno Schulz's last oeuvre, his morals, this message of destroying it, and the message that he had put under the walls shows a lack of respect towards Bruno Schulz as a Holocaust victim. That's exactly what uh, really has kept me very busy in, since 1999. It bothered me. All the events showing parts of the morals. Well, it's like uh, devotionals. It's uh, like Jesus Christ's uh, death um, in, 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 in Torino. It's got nothing to do with the person and the necessary respect we should pay him. I totally share your opinion. No, I have got a, I've got a somewhat heretic question. Is it absolutely clear to you that's bad, that this is bad? That part of the morals are now in Yad Vashem? Well, it's actually a dilemma. 
And as a film producer, I mean, you usually also use tricks. We visualize things, and the trick about it is, is, is to somehow overcome this dilemma. This mobile insulation is not somehow attached to Dravich or Bat Yashem, but it will give everybody the opportunity to see it. I learned from a Yiddish director and who had to move to Palestine and he said, if you are arrested uh, and uh, behind closed walls, then you try to create something uh, that keeps you busy. Let me now tell you the following. We've got almost one hour left now, a little bit less than an hour. Both in the Wolf and also the audience, which I can't see in Freiburg, I would like to now invite both audiences to join the discussion, discussion and ask questions. So I thought I could see the audience, but I'm not so sure that the, that this is really a work of art, what you prepared here. I don't really know where uh, they, they really represent a work of art. Well, of course, I translated Schultz. His words, his texts, his literature, this is really, really high standard. But I have my doubts about his pictures. So what's the actual problem? The problem is, or let me put it differently, I think everybody has a subjective opinion or a subjective view. Everybody, when looking at a picture, has a subjective view. We have an overabundance of pictures and we uh, don't reflect enough about the contents of the pictures because pictures are inflationary. We have too many of them. And second, Bruno Schulz's pictures, as you also said in your essay that we wrote for my catalogue, oh, well, a Polish senator thinks they are pornographic material. I mean, one might have differing opinions, but it's part of Bruno Schulz's overall oeuvre. He's not only an author, he's not only an artist, but he's also one of the key figures to understand the 20th century, which is also very strongly reflected in Bruno Schulz's literature. I think we are in a mirror era, the era that Bruno Schulz wrote about is a change of a pre-industrialized era into an industrialized era. Today, we are almost in a post-industrialized era. So for that reason, what Bruno Schulz says is as current and as topical as at his time. My opinion is that this, not only the circumstances were extraordinary at the time, for me, the value of the pictures is that they were painted below his standard. Uh, and their fragmentation contributes to making them an artifact? Not really. For me, it's a continuation. Or makes that, or gives that more value, attaches that more value to the pictures? Possibly on the level of the reflection. Well, I think I understand your position. On the one hand, it led to a multiplication 
of the degree of knowing, knowing of these pictures. But the key is not, is not the fragmentation. The scandal also offers new opportunities. I saw a much bigger opportunity, or I see a much bigger opportunity, if it had remained the same, if they had been left where they were originally painted, but they were taken away from the authentic room. These pictures were taken away from the room where they were created. So the question remains, what do we do about it? This local um, connection, what do we do about that? Because we now have more or less a crutch to make the entire composition visible again. This mattered very much to me, that this work that reflected at Felix Landau's times, but there was a meta level included in it. It reminds me of Anna Zisler in the story, the book, and her hair keeps growing and growing longer and longer. Sometimes you find things in the, uh, at the meta level. It's like an advertisement for this hair growing agent. Well, it would have been an opportunity. What we wanted at the time, and that's been your idea, is to make that a meeting center. We wanted to really uncover the entire mu murals and make that little room an international meeting center so that people would be able to talk about what, what has happened at the time, how traumatized the area has been, what contributed to it and what played a role at the time so that there'd be a free exchange and that whilst looking at the murals. This is an opportunity that's lost once and for all. Well, it's uh, also stimulating. I just heard that uh, the mayor of Borovic is now ready to establish a Bruno Schulz museum in his last place of residence, which is a good idea. Well, he's got a bad conscience now. Well, that's what he said. That's what he said in an interview that was broadcasted on radio. He said that he's now very much in favor of having a Bruno Schulz Museum in Drohovic. Of course, that's the right course to take, but as Mark Schulz says, it's always a question of the will. And how, whether this will be a dead museum or whether this will really a place where people meet and have an exchange. What Bruno Schulz did in his works can be interpreted in many different ways, but it uh, at least crossed certain borders. And crossing borders is today even more important than every day, because just 30 uh, kilometers away from here, that's uh, the end of the European Union, and we have uh, wider and wider borders. But that's part of the development part of European culture. And this part from Galicia, that's part of the entire picture. Looking around, how many authors come from that region, many of them living in the US today. Paul Oster's grandfather came from Lieberfreitag, so that's uh, in also close by, or Lieberklay comes from Stray, which is about 15 kilometers away from Drohovic. So there are many connections and traditions. You can feel it. You can feel it when reading what they wrote. You feel their roots. Without their roots, and a, a tree cannot live without roots. That's the difficulty that we have here when our borders close. That's exactly how I also see the pictures. Had the pictures been left 
where they were originally, one could interpret them, one could really uh, feel them, learn to feel them, learn to see them, learn to interpret them. Feeling, seeing, interpreting them would bring us to very big energies, these energies of destruction, of forcing people to do things, killing. Now I've got to, uh, now, now I imagine it as to be as a vast, big, tremendous work. Not concerning the artistic point of view, but it's phenomenal. It is phenomenal how it came to be created and also the location where it was created and also concerning the meta levels. However, you're, you're right. Well, I always try to defend my literary point of view, but he has been more than just a writer. I mean, there is Jerusalem on earth and also in the heavens. Well, it, I don't really want to make him weaker or more primitive as a performance artist than as an author. I mean, his work is, is uh, incredible for Bat Yasham. It's worried, ideas, it's virtual. But this is universal. I mean, it's been translated into Chinese and Japanese. It even works in the Asian languages. That's so fascinating about it. But there is also Drohovic in heaven and on earth. And there is the picture room in heaven and on earth, which you cannot destroy in heaven, which cannot be destroyed. But you're right. You're right in what has happened with it. All the hidden energies are now unleashed. Looking at the different rationals of the different players, then it seems to me as if this is a compulsory repetition of historical reflexes, such as we, the Ukrainians, we once again say, oh, well, we only found it after the others found it and saw it and appreciated it, but we were not willing, so to speak, to protect our heritage or to deal with our heritage. Only, and that's also a historical rationale that tells us, for the hundreds of time have we become active and have voiced, have made our voices heard. I mean, there is no owner. There are no owners. I mean, I'm not really talking about losses. The picture room as an entity is lost, but whether that means we have lost anything, that is something I just wanted to ask you. How do you see the future of this region? I mean, this area, Drohovic, I mean, there's so much still to be understood or to show, and you seem to be quite optimistic. No, not really. I'm rather skeptic. I don't really know how essential this picture room is. Whether you can call it optimism, I don't really know. So, how do I see the future? Well, I see it rather dim, but it wouldn't be much more rosy with the picture room. A room well, a role as a museum. But it, 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 it's now in a museum in Bad Yashem. Well, my opinion is a bit different. Because I think if this picture room is exhibited, that really revives 
memories, memories of a history which we have not really come to terms with, and that's exactly the objective of my film. It's always been the objective of my film that this film led to such a sad story of repeated destruction that has some, got something to do with the fact how tense relations still are in that matter. That means we still do not have the common ground. The picture room is a symbol of that and that uh, shows that it's worth it dealing with that. Not everything works as I wanted it to, but many things have developed in a positive sense and many of the readers who will read your translation into Ukrainian will feel the same. They'll draw their own conclusions, thinking autonomously. That is part of the education of the civil society. Do you think, Benjamin, that the picture room will at a certain stage be reconstructed in reality and not only on a virtual basis? I mean, I prepared the scientific basis for that, what, what the Shem and Ukraine will do with it, I can't tell you yet. I uh, don't have any influence in that. But I didn't, uh, since everything was not really uh, divided very scientifically, I at least created a scientific basis how you can put it back together again. And on the other hand, this picture room will start traveling and remind everybody of what has happened, both the destruction and also the circumstances, how it came into being. And these circumstances, they were composed of different factors. For one, uh, it was a renovation, for others not. Next week, I'll travel to Krakow, to Warsaw. I think the Brunner Schulz Festival is over now, and that was a very important step between Poland and Ukraine. Both countries together contributed to it and worked on it together because their relationship was very, very tense in recent years, and I'm quite happy that they succeeded in doing so. Let's now wait and see whether they can turn the page and start a new chapter now that they've done that together. The people whom I will meet in the uh, German Embassy next week, German Cultural Center, different museums, also in Krakow, will hopefully open opportunities to travel from Kiev to Lvov to Krakow, and we keep working hard. Joko and I, we've uh, really worked hard the entire last year. It's very difficult. It's got to do with the very, very difficult um, relations between Poland and Ukraine and also with Israel. Now we are trying to really turn the page and deepen these relationships. The knowledge about uh, one of the most important events and horrifying events, that is something that's also uh, been lost in Germany. Before I really open the floor to the audience, let me also say you could, this doesn't really play a role any longer. Whether the picture room is complete or will be completed or is fragmented. What this is about, and uh, that concerns Benjamin's films and also the picture room, these are works or acts of art. When dealing with art, we are maybe given the opportunity to act differently. Differently from 
the Ukrainian or the Polish or the Australian or German way of acting. So that we use art and dealing with art and with works of art to get away from these old rigid ways of thinking. I don't think we'll be uh, sillier afterwards than before it. Before it. There's always another step that you can take on this way towards Schulz. Every new translation in every country will contribute to it. At least I hope so. As an author, as a writer, he was even a little bit bigger than a painter, so every translation will make him less hermetic than he used to be. I mean, of course, that's part of his personality. Pictures, lost pictures. So this Shua metaphor, a traditional victim. Well, one shouldn't just reduce him uh, to a victim. What's the most important about him? Most important is that he really was one of the biggest people of the world, of the world. Everything else is also very important, but only as part of this process. Benjamin, your film is very important. Definitely, because it's the continuation of this theft and now your project with this virtual room, a wonderful idea. Shouldn't the pictures have stayed in Drohovich? I don't really know. I don't really know. I just wanted to take responsibility for my findings and I wanted to give the opportunity to other people to see them in their full composition in the original. Well, and I also wanted that people at different places could see them. I mean, the task of art is to cross borders and to open new ways, and that's been my attempt. Don't you think that Bruno Schulz himself wouldn't need that conflict? Bruno Schulz doesn't need anything any longer because he's passed away. No, because he is no longer amongst us. But there are different possibilities. I mean, it's not only his main oeuvre, which was created between the two world wars, that there's no doubt about that, that these were his main works. But this Ereignisse, wie Joko es gerade gesagt hat, dass ich glaube, dass sie ihre Berechtigung hat und es ist ja auch gar nicht, äh, sie macht halt auf so viele Dinge aufmerksam und sie, natürlich auch auf Dinge, die uns unangenehm sind. Und ich weiß auch, dass viele Menschen, wie ich das vorhin schon gesagt habe, die, die, die dunklen äh, Kapitel lieber in eine Schublade packen oder auf einen Haufen werfen und nicht wieder darüber nachdenken wollen. Aber gibt es einen Moment es eine in unserer Erfahrung, in unserer Erfahrung, wenn es einen Moment gibt, 
wo bestimmte Ereignisse sich zuspitzen und wiederholen, dann ist es, oder es ist so, wie wenn du über eine Bananenschale stolperst und du weißt, es ist glatt, wenn du darüber stolperst und du räumst sie nicht weg und das nächste Mal stolperst du wieder über die gleiche Schale. So ist es ungefähr. Und das hängt damit zusammen, dass wir das nicht, dass es nicht in unser Bewusstsein vorgedrungen ist, was wir wollen. Und wenn man diese Shoah, diesen Holocaust und den Zweiten Weltkrieg als ein Ereignis sieht, was so weit weg ist wie ägyptische Pyramiden in der Geschichte, dann begeht man einen Fehler, weil alle diese Dinge wären gar nicht geschehen, wenn es nicht so unaufgearbeitet wäre. Es ist ein guter Punkt, um äh, unsere beiden Auditorien äh, zum Gespräch einzuladen. So, äh, ah, herzlichen Glückwunsch. Hätte noch ein, zwei Fragen. Gibt es Fragen bei euch aus dem Publikum? Gibt es hier äh, Fragen in die Ukraine? Wie schaut es aus hier in, in Lemberg? Gibt es Fragen an äh, Julian Druchowitsch oder an Benjamin Geisler? Ja. Kommentare, Reflexionen, Meinungen, Fragen. Möglich wäre das ja. Gut, dann äh, bei uns meldet sich keiner. Ich frage ja. jetzt dann nach Freiburg. Ist es euch danach etwas zu sagen? Keine Fragen? Gut. Da ist eine Frage. Warten Sie mal, ich komme zu Ihnen. Ich habe ich hab keine Frage, aber ich war vor fünf Tagen in Krakau im Schindler Museum und ich finde jetzt diese Ausstellung, ich kenne Bruno Schulz nicht als Autor, aber ich finde das einfach ein Beispiel, um sich zu erinnern. Und von daher bin ich mit dem, was Sie gesagt haben, sehr einverstanden. Danke. Ich aber bitte lesen Sie sein literarisches Werk. Das kann ich Ihnen auch nur empfehlen. Es ist absolut empfehlenswert. Ich war völlig verblüfft davon, heute zu hören, dass Juri Androchowitsch das erstmal ins Ukrainische übersetzen mussten. Ach das nein, heißt, das, das ist das in der Bevölkerung. Die Übersetzung. Ist schon die sechste oder das, ja. Habe ich das falsch verstanden? Kannst, kannst du was dazu sagen, Juri? Ja, ja. Ja, ich wiederhole, das ist schon vierte oder fünfte Übersetzung. Ach, so. Das ist einfach die jüngste, die neueste Übersetzung, die von mir. Äh, eigentlich auf der Buchmesse in Lemberg sind im Moment alle Bücher ausverkauft. Noch weitere Fragen? Ich frage in Lemberg, ja, wir haben auch in Lemberg hier eine, eine Stimme. Keine Frage, sondern Juli Antropovic hat es vorher auch schon angesprochen. Ich fände es ganz toll, wenn wir die Bilder sehen könnten. Ja. Wie ginge das? Wäre das möglich, Benjamin, dass, dass die Bilder irgendwie gezeigt werden? Dass was gezeigt wird? Dass die, die Bilder, Bilder, die Bilder von der Bilderkammer. Bilder von der Bilderkammer? Ja. Das ist im Moment, es gibt demnächst ein paar Fotos auf meiner Webseite, benjamingeisler.de. Man kann das auch sehen auf der Internetseite vom Center for Urban History. Zu dieser Veranstaltung, dort ist unten ein Link auf meine Seite und von dort aus kann man demnächst ein paar Bilder sehen. Ist das eine Möglichkeit, aber es ist natürlich nicht die Kammer, weil die Kammer ist dreidimensional und begehbar maßstabsgetreu.
Ja, durch diese Wortmeldungen sind wir uns näher gekommen. Nicht? Jetzt habe ich nicht mehr dieses blöde Entfremdungsgefühl per Skype, sondern ich äh, glaube, dass, dass die Auditorien hier beide zusammensitzen. Na gut, lass uns das mal beenden. Wir hören uns bald, ganz bald wieder. Ich werde euch beiden Bericht erstatten, wie meine Reise in Polen ist. Und dann sollten wir uns Gedanken machen, wie wir an die ukrainischen Ausstellungsorte kommen. Ja, Benjamin, du hast es ganz sachlich gemacht, äh, diesen Abschied. Ich mache es etwas äh, umständlicher. Ich bedanke mich sehr, sehr herzlich bei dir, dass du online warst. Äh, mhm. Ich äh, gratuliere dir zu dieser Ausstellung in Freiburg. Ich bedanke mich sehr bei dir, Jurko, fürs Kommen und äh, für diese gute Diskussion hier. Ich bedanke mich bei den Kolleginnen und Kollegen hier in Lemberg und in Freiburg und liebe partnerschaftliche Grüße nach Freiburg. Schönen ich, Abend. Ich möchte eine Sache noch sagen. Ich möchte mich ganz herzlich bedanken für Roman Dubasevic, der genau. die Übersetzung ins Ukrainische die ganze Zeit gemacht hat und uns alle übersetzen musste. Lieber Roman, herzlichen Dank. Er lächelt durch das Glas. Ciao. Ja, wir ja, sehen ciao. uns. Ciao. ciao.